you would like to climb one of the most spectacular ridges in the European Alps, then this video is highly relevant for you. Because in this video, I'll provide a lot of tips and pass on my experience on climbing the Stödelgrad on Großklockner in Austria. The famous Stödelgrad on Großklockner is one of the biggest alpine climbs at a reasonable grade in the Alps, and there's a couple of really good reasons for that. But there's also a few very important things you should know before embarking on this huge adventure. And we'll cover that throughout the video. Before we proceed though, Remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive more videos about rock climbing, ice climbing and alpine climbing around Europe and gear advice. Stuttgart is graded 80 plus and it follows the prominent southwest ridge up to the summit of Großkommen. I've also done the Mitteleggi ridge on the Eiger in Switzerland which is graded D and I would actually say that the difficulties are more or less the same. The Stüdelgard is a one-day project and most people choose to spend the night before the climb at the Stüdelgard. You approach the Stüdelgard by parking at the parking lots near Lugner House and hike up from there. The hike takes between two to three hours based on your condition. And since we did our climb in late October 2019, we actually had to stay at the Winter Hut. The Winter Hut is equipped with beds and blankets for about 20 people and there's a stove oven as well. We didn't bring our sleeping bags, but just our sleeping bag liners. The stove runs on wood and when we visited the Winter Hut, all of the wood was actually damp, so we couldn't use it but we actually brought a gas burner just in case. And I would highly recommend that you do that too. When you're ready to climb the Stüdelgrad, then you hike up on the loose scree just across the Stüdelhütte for about 200 meters and cross the moraine until you meet the glacier. You hike on the right hand side of the glacier for another 200 meters until you come to the buttress that makes out the start of the Stüdelgrad. There's different ways that you can start the climb, but we actually hiked further 40 to 50 meters left of the buttress, which would make a much easier start. But the rock here is a bit loose, so you should be careful. You can break down the Stüdelgrad into three overall sections. The first section is rather easy and involves mostly grade 1 to grade 2 rock climbing. There's a few grade 3 sections as well, such as the stunning chimney at the very beginning. You climb on the left hand side of the ridge and you can climb this uh, by moving together and protect yourselves with some of the bolts and iron pikes. But I actually also play some cams just in case. The second section starts at the Frühstückplatz, the breakfast ledge. And this is a really good pit stop for a break. 
And this is also a very good place to evaluate whether you want to continue climbing the Stuttgart. Because bailing out after the Frühstückplatz is very hard. The Stuttgart also intensifies after this point and there's actually a few harder sections that we chose to pitch. And there are several aid sections as well at A0 where there's some fixed rope that you can pull in. The final section of Stuttgart is the summit itself. About 50 meters before the summit, the climb really eases out. And the summit is just amazing. To descend from the summit of Großglockner via the normal route that would lead you towards Kleiner Glockner. And this shouldn't be underestimated too. There's a lot of loose rock and there would probably be both snow and ice as well. And with the many teams uh, climbing the normal uh, route, um, there's a lot of people to pass too. And that will increase risk. In terms of gear, we brought eight Alpine extendable quick draws and a set of cams from 0.5 to 2 and a single set of medium nuts. We also brought a handful of Dyneema slings as well. Several websites actually say that eight quick draws and a handful of slings is enough, but I would definitely say that we consumed our gear. If you choose to climb with a light rack, then you will definitely face severe runouts, and that will increase risk too. The route is bolted and there's iron pikes as well, but there's a long distance between most of them. Actually, only on the second half of the Stuttgart that I would say that the distance between the bolts are within a reasonable distance. We climbed on a sing single 60 meter rope that was coiled up, so we had about 15 meters between us. And there's a few sections with iron cables as well, so you might want to bring gear for that. And finally, I must say I was a bit disappointed about the advice that we got from the Stuttelhütte regarding the conditions of the Stuttelgrad. Before doing an alpine climb, it's a very good idea to call the local hut and ask for conditions. The staff here told us that the Stuttelgrad wasn't in condition and there hadn't been anyone climbing it for three consecutive weeks. We were a bit skeptic about that though, because our own research showed us that the route was supposed to be in condition. So based on the conversation with the Stuttelhütte, we actually also asked the internet. And we came in con contact with several local alpinists who all said that the climb was in perfect conditions and we should definitely give it a go. So lesson learned. I guess you have to evaluate the input that you get from different people and then make the decisions that you feel are right for you. So if you enjoyed watching this video, remember to hit the like button below and if you have any questions regarding how to climb the Stuttelgrads, then leave a comment below.